What is current? What is electric current? In this video, we're going to talk about that. So let's say we have a 100 ohm resistor represented by the symbol R, and it's connected across, let's say, a 9 volt battery. What is the current that is flowing in the circuit? By the way, conventional current flows from the positive terminal of the battery towards the negative terminal of the battery. Electron flow is actually in the opposite direction. So keep that in mind. Now, based on Ohm's law, which states that the voltage across a resistor is equal to the current flowing through the resistor times the resistance, we could use that formula to calculate the current flowing in the circuit. The current is going to be the voltage divided by the resistance. So we have a 9 volt battery across a 100 ohm resistor. When you divide these two, you're going to get the current in amps. So the current is 0 0.09 amps. Now it's important to understand that a current of 1 amp is equal to 1000 milliamps. So to convert from amps to milliamps, multiply by 1000. 0 0.09 times 1000 is 90. So the current is also 90 milliamps. But what does this number mean? A current of 0 0.09 amps, what does that mean? The electric current flowing in a circuit represents the flow of electricity. It tells you how many electrons per second are flowing at any given point. Even though you can calculate current by taking the voltage and dividing by the resistance, you can also describe current in terms of the rate of charge flow. Current is equal to Q divided by T. Current is measured in amps. Q, the electric charge, is measured in coulombs. T is measured in seconds. So a current of one amp means that you have one coulomb of electric charge flowing every second. So you could think of current as the rate of electric charge flow. How much charge is flowing per unit of time. Now, the electric charge represents the quantity of excess charged particles. One electron has an electric charge of negative 1.609 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. So if you take 1 and divide it by 1.609 times 10 to the negative 19, you'll get that 1 coulomb is equal to 6.2 times 10 to the 18 electrons. So an electric charge of one coulomb represents that quantity of electrons. Now to be specific, negative one coulomb of electric charge represents this quantity of electrons. If it's positive, that means that you have more protons than electrons. But ignoring the negative sign, and a current of 1 amp represents the flow of 6.2 times 10 to the 18 electrons every second. So this gives you a better understanding of what electric current is. It tells you how many electrons are flowing in the circuit every second. Now you can control the amount of electric current that is flowing in a circuit using a current limiting resistor. So according to Ohm's law, we stated that the electric current is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. As you increase the voltage of a circuit, the electric current will increase. These two are directly related to each other. Likewise, if you decrease the voltage, the electric current flowing in a circuit will decrease. Now, if you increase the resistance of the circuit, you're going to impede the flow of electric current the current will decrease. These two are inversely related since R is in the bottom of the equation. If you decrease the resistance, the current will increase. So if the voltage is held constant, you can control the amount of current flowing in the circuit by controlling the resistance of the circuit. If you want to increase the current, decrease the resistance. If you want to decrease the current, increase the resistance. Now let's talk about how to calculate the current in different scenarios. So let's say we have the following circuit. We have a battery and we have 
three resistors in series. In a series circuit, there's only one path for the electric current to flow. And we're going to say that we have a 12 volt battery. Let's say this is a 1 ohm resistor, a 2 ohm resistor, and a 3 ohm resistor. So we're going to call this R1, R2, and R3. So what is the current that is flowing in a circuit? In order to calculate the current flowing in a circuit like this, where you have resistors in series, here's what you need to do. By the way, if you want to try it, feel free to pause the video. First, calculate the total or the equivalent resistance. In series, you can just add the resistors. So it's R1 plus R2 plus R3. So it's 1 plus 2 plus 3. So we have a total resistance of 6 ohms. Next, to calculate the current, it's going to be the voltage across those three resistors divided by the sum of the three resistors. So we have 12 volts across those three resistors divided by 6 ohms, and that gives us a current of 2 amps. So that's how you can calculate the current flowing in a circuit where you have resistors connected in series. Now let's see what's going to happen if we have resistors connected in parallel. So what we're going to do is we're going to have, we're going to connect a 12 volt battery in parallel to three resistors. Now we said that in a series circuit, there's only one path for the current to flow. In a parallel circuit, there's multiple paths for the current to flow. So we're going to call IT the total current flowing in a battery. It can flow this way, it can flow through the second resistor, or it could flow through the third resistor. So that's a parallel circuit where the current has many options in which it can flow. Let's call this R1, R2, and R3. So R1 is going to be a 2 ohm resistor, R2 is going to be a 3 ohm resistor, and R3 a 4 ohm resistor. So let's calculate I1, that is the current flowing through R1, I2 is the current flowing through R2, and I3 is the current flowing through R3. So to calculate I1, it's going to be the voltage across R1. Now the good thing about a parallel circuit is that the voltage across each resistor in parallel are the same. In a series circuit, the current flowing through each resistor is the same. So we have 12 volts across a 2 ohm resistor. That gives us a current of 6 amps. Now to calculate I2, it's going to be V over R2. So 12 volts divided by 3 ohms, that's going to be 4 amps. And to calculate I3, it's going to be V over R3. So that's 12 volts divided by 4 ohms, which is 3 amps. So let's put 3, I mean, this is 6, this is 4, this is 3. IT represents the total current. It's the sum of the individual currents. It's I1 plus I2 plus I3. So it's 6 plus 4 plus 3. So we get a total current of 13 amps. Now there's another way in which we can confirm our answer or get the answer. And that is by calculating the total resistance of the circuit and then using that to calculate the current. In a parallel circuit, the total resistance is going to be 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. And then all of this is going to be raised to the negative 1 power. So go ahead and type this in your calculator. 1 half plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 4 raised to the minus 1. You should get 12 over 13, which has a decimal, it's 0 0.92307, if you round it. So now to calculate the total current that is leaving the battery, it's going to be the voltage of the battery divided by the total resistance. So it's 12 volts divided by 0.923077.
and this will give you 12.9999892, which is approximately 13 amps. So now you have two ways in which you can calculate the total current flowing in a parallel circuit. Now let's talk about some other properties relating to electric current. So let's say we have a node as represented by the red dot. And we have a current flowing towards that node. And let's say that current is 8 amps. And then there's a current flowing away from that load. I mean node rather. I said that wrong. We're going to call it I2. Let's say it has a current of 3 amps. What is the current that is leaving this node? I3. What is that equal to? What would you say? You probably know the answer intuitively, but this introduces us to something called Kirchhoff's Current Law, which states that the sum of the currents that enter and leave a node or a certain point in a circuit adds up to zero. So I1 plus I2 plus I3 is equal to zero. Now, in order for this equation to work, some currents will be positive and, uh, while others are negative. So let's define currents that are entering the node as a positive current, whereas the currents that are leaving the nodes, that's going to be a negative current. So based on this, we can determine not only the magnitude of I3, but also the direction of I3 based on the sign that we get. I1 is 8 amps. I2 is negative 3 amps. So 8 plus negative 3 is 5. If we move the 5 amps from the left side to the right side, it's going to change from positive to negative. So we get that I3 is negative 5 amps. So because the current is negative, like this one, it's leaving the node, which means it's going towards the right and not to the left. So this is negative 5 amps. For the sake of practice, let's work on another example. So in this example, we're going to have four different currents. So let's say I1 is flowing into the branch, and it's a current of 12 amps. And we're going to say I2 is leaving a branch, and it's at negative 16 amps. And uh, I3 is also leaving the node, rather. And we're going to say that's negative 8 amps. So calculate I4 and determine if it's going towards the node or away from it. Feel free to pause the video and work on this. So according to Kirchhoff's law, I1 plus I2 plus I3 plus I4 must equal 0. So I1 is 12, I2 is negative 16, I3 is negative 8, and let's calculate I4. So 12 minus 16, that's a negative 4. And negative 4 plus negative 8, that's negative 12. So moving this to the other side, we can see that I4 is equal to positive 12 amps. Now, what is the direction of I4? Is it going to the right or to the left? What would you say? Now, because the current is positive, it is going to be going towards the node. And that is, it's going towards the left. It's going in that direction. So that is the direction of I4 in this example. It's going towards the node since it has a, it's a positive current. We've defined positive currents as flowing towards the nodes. Negative currents as flowing away from the nodes. Now, let's work on another type of problem. That is the current divider problem. So let's say you have two parallel resistors and you don't know the voltage across these two resistors. So let's call the first one R1 and the second one R2. And let's say that R1 is, let's say 10 ohms and R2 is 20 ohms. Now the current that is flowing in this branch, we're going to say it's 12 amps. We're going to call that IT. How can we determine I1, the current flowing through R1, 
and I2, the current flowing through R2 without knowing the voltage across the two resistors. Now there's a formula that can help you to do that. In order to calculate I1, it's going to be the other resistor, R2, divided by the sum of the two resistors times the total current flowing in that section. So it's going to be 20 divided by 10 plus 20, which is 30, times 12. So it's 2 thirds of 12. 12 divided by 3 is 4 times 2 is 8. So we have a current of 8 amps flowing through R1. To calculate I2, it's going to be R1, the other resistor, divided by the sum of the two resistors times the total current. So it's going to be 10 over 30 times 12. So it's one third of 12, which is four. So that is I2, it's four amps. And this makes sense because eight plus four adds up to the original current, 12. Now that we know the current flowing through each resistor, we can calculate the voltage across both resistors. And because the resistors are parallel, the voltage across them should be the same. So let's calculate V1. It's I1 times R1. We have an 8 amp current flowing through a 10 ohm resistor, 8 times 10. That means that the voltage across that resistor is 80 volts. Now to calculate V2, it's going to be I2 times R2. So we have 4 amps of current flowing through the 20 ohm resistor, and that gives us the same voltage, 80 volts. So anytime you have two resistors in parallel to each other, the voltage across those two resistors must be the same.